Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. So today I wanted to show you how I track my language learning recently because I have changed some things up. First I was tracking it in my um, planner, but um, yeah, because I switch up uh, the apps that I'm using a lot and every week is like my tracker differently and sometimes it's just not very easy to track it on paper. And because of that, I started using Notion again. And today I just wanted to show you guys how I'm using Notion and especially for language learning and most of the content that I'm going to show you is about the Japanese language. Yeah, I have been using Notion now for a couple of years. I think I started in 2020, maybe even um, earlier. But back then I used it only as uh, a note taking app. And uh, yeah, I have written down some things and I also tried to use it for language learning, but eventually I stopped doing it because it wasn't so much better compared to like sums and notes and you never review the things that you have written. At least that was my problem. And Notion, it has a lot of possibilities, but I didn't know those possibilities back then. And I'm still not a Notion expert. Uh, but I figured some things out, especially how to use databases and how to create relational databases and to use more options that Notion has to offer. So I wanted to share with you what I set up for myself and how I'm using it daily now. So maybe some of you can learn something from this video and make your own data set, make your own um, language plan or tracker for language learning in Notion. This video is not sponsored by Notion. So this, like my honest opinion, is just how I'm using it. So this is like my homepage. Here you have my Notion index and my goals for 2023. I have uh, three languages here, Japanese, Spanish, and Chinese. But right now I'm mostly focused on Japanese on Notion and I did some things for Spanish. And Chinese is only like old stuff that I written years ago, but didn't really organize it. Then I'm also doing other things in Notion, but that's maybe for a different video. Daily language learning, it's a data set that I made separately from like the Japanese data set. It's for all languages that I'm doing at the time. I will show you the data set itself. So I set it up like this. You have every day of the year and then a lot of checklists of like checking points for every app that I'm using or activity that I'm doing for language learning. So this is the data set, but when you go in but when I go back to my view, I just see the day of today, the 27th of May. That's when I'm filming this. And I just see all of the checkpoints that I can check when I'm using one of these apps or when I'm like doing some Japanese reading or maybe some Spanish reading. So it's not in a particular order. It's just all the things that I can do for my language learning. And then I can just check it at the end of the year. I will see how often I did certain activities here in the end of the page we have checked checked so then you see how many times i have used this app so for kanji garden i have used it 12 times so one time a day 12 days it's not a lot <laughs> but because i'm using multiple apps uh, it's sometimes very difficult to track them all on paper and this way i can just see everything that i did and at which specific day and then at the end of the year i see how many apps i have used and how often so this is like the only tracking that I'm doing for now. And the way that I set it up, this database with all of the days, it, I needed a different website for that. So it's not only Notion that I use, I needed to use another website to get all of the dates. But I learned that from another YouTuber that is far more an expert on Notion. And I will link his video down below that you can see how you can set it up yourself. So that's the first thing. But then we're going to the Japanese language learning. And this is just my page for Japanese. In here, I can immediately put a new word. So this is the vocabulary and I can put a new kanji when I uh, see a new word or a new kanji when I'm reading something or doing something for Japanese. And these like views are linked to the data sets, of course. And we're going to look at the data sets and how I set it up. <laughs> I call it the ultimate mining resource because like this whole system is based on mining content. So books, uh, articles, uh, YouTube videos, it doesn't matter which resource I'm using. I want to extract information, words, vocabulary, grammar, 
and put it in here. There are multiple things that I can do here. We have the, like the mining system, which is more focused on the content. I have the kanji vocabulary readings of kanjis. So this one is directly linked to the kanji data set. Further, so we have the radicals. I want a data set with all the radicals together that I can also look up which radicals I've already learned. And also all of the kanji in the kanji data set, like has a relation with the radicals data set. And then you can see every main radical in that kanji. So like the most important radical. Then I have all the kanji meanings. So I have also a separate data set for the meanings. And when I'm looking for a meaning, like an English word, I can find uh, the kanjis that are related to this meaning. So that could be handy as well. Then I have some example sentences that are linked to kanji and vocabulary and also to grammar. I have a different data set for verbs because I think those are a little bit different from the main vocabulary, um, like your general vocabulary. And I want to see the specific verbs and then maybe I can also do something with conjugations. But for now, I didn't do much in here. Grammar, it's not, not the main thing for me, but when I encounter some grammar points, I try to put it in here. And then we have Japanese reading. So that's all the things that I'm reading, books, articles, small <laughs> like notes. I can all put it in there and extract kanjis and vocabulary or grammar and put it in the rest of the system. I will go into more detail uh, later, but I will show you first all the things. We have different levels. I want to include this because sometimes I want to know for every word or kanji at which level I can learn it. So for JOPT or in where in Wani Kanji I would encounter this. And Wani Kanji is a kanji and vocabulary learning program that I'm using and they have their own level system. So the GOPT is very simple. It's N1 until N5. We have all of the levels here. And then all of the countries that I've encountered so far per level. It's not a lot because I'm just uh, started using this for two weeks now and like filling out the data. Then we have the vocabulary um, that are also linked to a certain level and some grammar points and one verb so far. Then we have the Joyo kanjis. So this is only kanjis. Joyo uh, system does not do that for vocabulary. It's a Japanese system for the kanjis that you have to know in school, that you learn in school. So from grade one until grade 12, I think. But for now, I only have these kanjis in here. The last one is Wani Kani. I just started doing this, so it's uh, not in an order, in a particular normal order. It's just when I see a kanji, and I know the level of Wani Kani, I will put the level of Wani Kani in here. It will show more information here, but for now I only have these uh, levels. So how do I know which level it is? Well, most of the time when I'm looking up Kanji, I'm using jshow.org. And when we look at, at the word, let's just say like, um, Tsuki, favorite word, <laughs> moon. So we go to details and then we see that it's uh, the meaning moon. We have here the reading, the kanji, of course, and then we see that it's a common word, that it's JOPT level three, and that it's also Banikani level two. And in here, on the right side, we see it again, and also it says that it's a Joyo kanji from the level grade one, or it's taught in grade one. So that's where I find all of the information. I only use Jisho to look up the kanji very quickly and see the meanings, some example sentences, and all of the levels. And when I want to know more details, I just go to Kanjudo, which is on a different website, but most of the things that I want to know immediately, I can find here. So those are the levels. Then we have some additional information or additional data sets. I have my Japanese um, bucket list, which are just some goals that I want to achieve. So this is not all of my goals, but I just started filling this out. I made all, all kinds of lists and goals for Japanese and yeah, goals are these things that you have to work on a very long time and sometimes you don't achieve them. And I think this bucket list is a little bit easier because it's just like less time consuming goals, more goals in detail, smaller goals. Um, that's why I started doing this and I got this idea from another YouTuber. I will mention her video down below where she talks about why she doesn't make goals anymore, but makes bucket lists. And I thought that it made a lot of sense because that's what I have been doing for the last couple of years, I made all the small lists with goals and then I forgot about them or I made new ones. And this is just a bucket list of all the things that I want to do and to achieve, but it's not like this one big goal. Then we have my progress. I have this diary 
uh, which just started, I think, in 2021 or 22. But yeah, right now I'm using this progress page, which is also a data set, which is linked with other data sets uh, with the bucket list. So when I achieve my bucket list goal and I can put it in there and then it will show here. And here I just divided it by skills. So I have the reading skills, writing, listening, speaking, and kanji mastery. So when I like unlock those thousand kanjis in um, the kanji garden, I will put it in here under kanji mastery. So that's the idea. And with reading, I can also see uh, which books I have read. Then we have the grammatical terms, which is a data set filled with grammatical terms it's when i encounter a term in jisho or somewhere else like translative <laughs> trans translative verbs and pseudo verbs uh noun e adjectives i just want to put in explanations here later on sometimes it's nice to look up very fast what the term means and then i have my learning resources which is still not a complete data set because i have many more but you can see what i'm using right now so we have Satori Reader and the story that I have read and finished. That's why it's showing up here. And it's from the data set with the reading material. So this one is also linked. Then it's also linked to Japanese bucket list. And then we see that I want to reach level 10 in Wanikani. That's one of my goals here. Kanji Garden, I want to look first 500 kanjis and then 1000 kanjis. And it's also linked to Kanji Garden. Then I have this article that I've read with the link of the article and this uh, article is linked to the NHK news and this is a website where you can read Japanese news articles but then in like in easy mode because you can look up words and see for Ghana that's all the data sets that I'm using for Japanese but the main data set that I really want to fill out and that I'm focusing the most on is discover the kanji and I will show you how it's set up. So here we have all of the kanjis that so far I have encountered since I'm using uh, this data set. So uh, right now we have how many kanjis in here? 78. The data set contains my study progress. So we see here the kanji for one, uh, which is only one line, very simple. And I have learned this kanji as one of the first kanjis years ago, so it's 100% study progress. I don't have to learn this kanji further. We have some readings that are associated with this kanji. We have uh, one vocabulary word. I also put down if a kanji is a radical or not. And then the main radical of the kanji is the kanji itself, of course, which level it is. It's the N5 and it's taught in grade one in Japan. It doesn't have any example sentences for now. Um, and here I have also linked the reading material data set. So all of my readings, the books, the articles, I've put it in here like reading material source. So when I encounter a kanji while reading an article um, with this link data set, I can put in the kanji very easy. And then I know that I have discovered this kanji in a particular uh, piece of reading material. And I will show you later how I'm doing that. Then we have the verbs that could be made with this kanji. So some kanjis um, could be a word on, on their own, could be a radical, they could also be a verb. And yeah, if it's a verb, I will put it in here. And then the created time. I have not put in the one kanji level for I think most of the kanjis. So for now, that's how it works in here and which data sets are linked. And if we go down, um, we see that some of the kanjis don't have a study progress yet because I just added them and I still need to order them. So when I see a kanji for the first time, I have looked it up, read all the meanings, the readings, example sentences, and I put it in here. The first number that I'm going to give a kanji is 5%. At the end, I want all the kanjis to be 100%. And when I see it for the first time, I will add 5%. When I have to look it up again, I will again add 5%. So to achieve 100% knowledge, I need to look up every kanji at least 20 times. And for some kanji that I already know, I have put in 100 or 10% or 50% and it's all like subjective. It's a little bit like um, on how, it's how I see my knowledge in this kanji, but um, every new kanji that I don't know and really have to discover for the first time, I'm going to put in as 5%. So that's the system that I'm using for myself. For now, this is just, uh, 0% because I still have to look up this kanji. So as you can see, I still have a lot of kanjis to process and to learn. And now I will show you how I'm doing that while I'm reading something. 
So we go to Japanese reading data set and we have here an article. I will open it up and we will make this one bigger. So here we have the article. It's an article from NHK News and this is the title. All the countries in here are also linked to the country data set and some of the vocabulary that was new to me uh, and how I know that it was new because I have read this article in, when was it? Can I see that back? Finished reading, created time, created in, in 2021. I have uh, read this article and then I just made a small note in Notion and I put it in all of the vocabulary here and use different highlights to um, make a system like color system. Orange was new words, blue was unknown reading and things like that. Uh, but obviously this is a lot of work and what I'm doing now is much easier. But I still use this article and I put it in my new system and extracted all of the words. And yeah, the funny thing is I have read this article, I have highlighted the words, I've looked up the words and put it in there. But most of them, um, except from Kobo ones, yeah, some of them I know, but most of them I didn't remember anymore because I have not looked at this note <laughs> like in two years. So I hope the system that I'm creating now uh, will help me to review my notes, my kanji's vocabulary, everything better than um, I used to do it. So when I see a new kanji, Let's say I don't know um, this kanji here, which is the kanji for day or sun. It's one of the first that you learn, but let's say I don't know it. The reason why I didn't highlight it, because of course I know it, uh, but let's uh, try to put it in here to link it to the kanji data set. So I will just paste it in here and we see immediately that this kanji is already in my data set. So I will not link it again um, to to here, but I can open it if I, oh, now I linked it, but fine. I can unlink it later. I can open it here and I can see that it's the kanji for day, sun, Japan, or a counter for days. I see all of the readings. I see the vocabulary. I can link this uh, specific vocabulary word, which is uh, Japan <laughs> itself. I can link it uh, in here as well. I see that it's a radical. I see an example sentence and now it's linked to this article, which is unnecessary. Um, so I can find this for every kanji. And when I know that this kanji is in the system, but I don't know it, then I can link this article to it. When I don't want to add it to my data set, but I do want to look it up and to review it, um, I can do another thing as well. I can highlight this kanji again and copy it, of course. And then I can go to link, put in the kanji here. And then we see it every time I've used this kanji in Notion, in like in all of my Notion pages. So now I see that I have used it in discover the kanji, which is the data set that I want for my kanji information. I can link it. And now every time that I click here on this kanji, I go to the page of the kanji and I can see the meaning. And this is the reading. If I want to do the same with the vocabulary in here, I can do that too. I can select this vocabulary, copy it, go to link, search for this vocabulary. And we see that I have this vocabulary mentioned in uh, this article, <laughs> but I don't have this port added to my vocabulary data set or to my kanji data set, of course. I have to edit it first to my vocabulary data set, and then I can link it here. So we can do that with another word, uh, like for example, um, let me see this one. I can copy it again, try to link it. And we see that this word is in my vocabulary data set. We see here the Japanese language learning and then the data set, which is vocabulary. Now I can link it. And now when I click on it, I will go to the page and it's not filled out yet, but um, I could see the meaning in here and all the kanjis when I link it. Um, and this is the word for, I think, Ministry of Health. But um, I don't know for sure. So we can look it up in Jisho. Yeah, Ministry of Health. So let's do this one together. So we have uh, the reading here. I will put it here. Um, it's a long word. Uh, Kose ro do shou. 
Kosero Dojo. I think I pronounced it incorrect. Oh, there's no pronunciation here. Oh, it's fine. So then we will do the meaning. Then we want to add every kanji separately to this port. And these kanjis are already in the data set. So now we have all the kanjis that are in this port edited also in our kanji data set, but also in this page. So when I'm looking up this board and I also don't know some of the countries in here, I can also look up the country itself and then it's going to the country. And this is the, the vocabulary data set, which is also linked to most of the pages that I just mentioned. So I hope that it made sense to you and that um, you guys can understand how the data sets works together. If not, I can also make a video uh, where I'm reading a new text and adding the things and putting new information in data sets. But for now, this is the system that I'm using. I will obviously add some things uh, in the last week. I, I think it took me two days to set this up and it took me like the whole week to change some things, to tweak here and there and just to make it more functional. And I think over the weeks I will change some of the things. But for now, this is what I'm using. And it took me a long time to step over to Notion and to track my language learning like this. I really love paper and planners and books and notebooks. And I do have a main notebook still for Japanese and I still have my Hobonichi to write things down. And I even still have my language learning journal. But um, those are nice for reflecting and for also writing things down. And um, I like having like the option to write down on paper. But it's impossible to create this kind of systems on paper. And I know that when I'm putting things in my notebook, I am learning at the moment, but I will never really review the content that I have written down. And uh, that's unfortunate. So <laughs> that's why I created this. And the reason why I didn't want to use Notion at the first place, um, years ago I tried it, but and then I didn't understand all the things that I could do with it. And it was just a lot of work to get into it. So I didn't want to do it. And I just use it like um, a note taking app, which is a notion is not only a note taking app. The, the reason why this works for me is because it's more than note taking. It's linking, it's adding information to information and keep on adding information, right? So uh, it works really good. But then I didn't understand that. Recently, I picked up Notion again for planning my YouTube videos or blogging content. And um, I started using data sets. But now this week, I really put in the work to understand how data set worked and how relation between data set worked and how I could set it up. And yeah, it gave me the system. <laughs> but uh, another reason why I didn't want to do it uh, in first place is because I don't really trust technology that much. I am always like scared that maybe something happens to Notion. Maybe this program stopped working or maybe company behind it will go bankrupt. I don't know. It could happen. And then I will lose all of my information. That was one of the reasons why I didn't yeah, use it so much. But then I thought that I'm also using older programs that, I'm, that are existing for a very long time. For example, Microsoft, <laughs> it's uh, even older than I am. So, and I'm using it for a lot of things. I'm using it to write my thesis, which is also very important. And I have trust in that system. So I think uh, it's fine that I put in all the work and information in here as well. Even though if something happens to Notion, I still have put in a lot of work and I also have this information, hopefully one day in my brain. So. It should be not for nothing. <laughs> and I really like setting this up. So as you can see, I'm not an expert in Notion. Uh, I just started out and this is what I created so far. There are people, of course, in YouTube that also um, have more videos, of course, on Notion, but also have more advanced pages. Uh, but this works for me. And for now, I'm not going to make it more complex. This I already have like all of these data sets working together and it's complex enough for me. Um, and for now, I mean, most of the things that I'm doing, it's for the Japanese language, except for my daily tracking. This is also some of the, the things in here also for Spanish. And I can always add up new um, apps 
for other languages, but for now I'm focusing on Japanese and sometimes on Spanish. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.